talk a little bit about press release and how you can use the media to get you extra exposure. So once you get all of your ducks lined up on your website and you've created this fantastic funnel and it all happens very automatically, you tip people into the top and then they just filter all the way down. Once that happens, then you want to try and see what you can do to up the number of people that are starting to see your offering. And press using press and media is a great way to do that because you can get loads of free advertising dollars where it might cost you, you know, six thousand dollars to run an ad in the age, but if they end up doing an editorial on you, you end up getting it for free. So how do you get the media to fall in love with you? Um, and what what's the benefit as well? Like I mean there, there are different types of testimonials. Like I talked about how important those testimonials are. I think getting the customer testimonials is key. Uh, getting celebrity endorsements and things like that is good. Uh, experts, like it's almost like we're going down this tree of testimonials. But the, the one that is the ultimate testimonial is when a media or some organization um, it covers you and you get in the press. Because there's that halo effect, you considered an expert because they only write up about experts. Uh, there's so many different benefits that come from that. Like, I mean, all of that expert positioning that I was talking about in the previous session really just gets pushed up to the next level when it's not you going out there saying, I'm the expert. Someone else is now. You really get a fantastic halo effect. And you can see, like, I'm going to show you the strategies that I use to get this media coverage. Um, there's just a few. And, and, and throughout the presentation, I've just put different examples in of, of different things. Um, let's have a look. Uh, the media endorsement, uh, that idea I was saying, the halo effect that you get, it can't be faked, it can't be bought, and you get that instant expert status. So that was, uh, they did a full article on me for uh, In Smart Investor, Retire Rich, uh, and you can see, it was quite funny, I remember they called me in to do that photo shoot and went into this studio to do it, and that that photo, I fought so hard at it. He, he wanted me to sit there on the phone like I was talking to someone, and the phone wasn't even plugged into the wall or anything. He was just wanting me, it was like a real canned, cheesy shot that he wanted me to take, and I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm not doing it. And then he's like, well, can you just hold the mouse? And I'm like, the computer's not even on. <laughs> it just, it feels too fake. So I think that's the closest he ended up getting me. I just sat there with my arms crossed and said, I'll, I'll yes, I'm, I'm here. But. Um, uh, that's another story. Okay, so with the press release, you need to think about all about getting the good hooks. Uh, it's about creating a hook that is going to, to draw someone in because what is the media really looking for? The media is looking for a good story. That's all they want. They want to have something that they can write up about that other people are going to be interested in. So what are some ways that you can find that hook. One of the best ways that you can do is coattail what's going on in the media. So let's say that something happened, um, it, well, I mean, I'll, I'll go back to the Old Spice example. If the, the, the best way for us to write on that whole Old Spice uh, parody commercial that we did uh, would have been to, as it was breaking, we write a story in a press release about how this Old Spice viral video has created a whole second wave of uh, viral parody videos that came out of the first video. So what does that do? That gives the reporter who's looking for a new angle on how to write on a story that's already happening, because it's already in the news, so the reporter wants to write about it, but he doesn't want to just say what everybody else is saying. Like, he just doesn't want to say the same thing over and over. So what you're looking for is you want to try and create something just slightly left of centre um, that, that rides in, in the sort of coattails and in the slipstream of that uh, and, and puts a new spin on things. So following the general media is a good way. You can use Google Alerts, uh, keep an eye on uh, Yahoo Answers, see what some of your blog, you know, popular blog posts are, um, surveying your customers. They're just a few ideas on how you can think of different angles. But I really think the best way is to follow what's going on in the general media and see if you can go from that angle. So I'll, I'll tell you the, the way that I, I sold the MCG, uh, and I talked about it briefly at the start of the day. So. What ended up happening, I, I read that book, The One Minute Millionaire, and it talked about Paul Hartuni and this guy who sold the Brooklyn Bridge. So I was driving past the MCG after reading that book, and I noticed they were doing a whole lot of construction on the MCG. Uh, and I was, it was almost like a, 
a light bulb moment, fireworks went off in my mind. I thought, oh, this is perfect. It's almost like a gift from the gods. And I started counting my money already in my head. I'm sitting there going, oh, I'll make millions. Because uh, Paul Hartunian, when he did this for selling the Brooklyn Bridge, um, he had the media hound him for like six months afterwards and he sold millions and millions of dollars of w worth of uh, just little pieces of uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. So. I, I'd driven past the MCG, got this idea, and then I thought, right, I'm going to get in touch with the wreckers, the people who pulled apart the MCG. And the, what they were doing, they were pulling down the Ponsford stand, and they, you know, the green wooden seating, it's very synonymous with uh, the old MCG. They used to have this painted green wooden seating. And they also had uh, carpet with the MCC uh, crest on it, the Melbourne Cricket Club crest. It's very iconic. Uh, and they were doing the demolition, and they were getting rid of all of this. And not being the sharpest tack in the box, um, the first thing that I did is I thought, I'm going to sell the bricks from the uh, MCG. So I went to the people who were doing the demolition and I said, oh, can I buy some of these bricks? Which probably isn't the smartest thing. It would have killed me on shipping. Uh, you can imagine what it would have been like mailing a brick. But I was thinking you could own a brick from the MCG, which I thought would have been kind of cool. But then when I got there, I was talking to the guy and I just gave him a little uh, sort of snippet of what I was planning. And he said, oh, you might want to go talk to Will and the Wreckers because they got all of the wood and they got the carpet and that type of thing. So. I ended up going to Wheel and the Wreckers, bought a whole bunch of wood, borrowed $1,000, uh, filled up Dad's car with all of the green wooden seating, took a roll of the carpet, and they had a whole bunch more of the carpet, only I'd filled up the car. So I said, I'm going to come back tomorrow. Can you just hold it all for me? Uh, I'll come back and get it tomorrow. So he said, yep, no worries. You know, who's going to come and buy you know, enough carpet to sort of fill out a, a basketball court? you'd think not anyone. So I, I went home that night, went back the next day, uh, and he goes, oh, you'll never believe it. Someone came in and bought all of the, the remaining carpet. And he said, oh, but it's, it's okay, because he just said he was going to use it to line the pool, his pool room floor. So it was like, I don't know, I just imagine some rich dude who thought, yeah, I'll put it in the games room and that'll be kind of cool. So uh, I didn't really think too much of it. Uh, I went up to, uh, there was a photo earlier on, and I'll tell you a bit more about the Brad Sugars billionaire in training boot camp that I went to, but I flew up to Brisbane for that. I got everything ready. I got the press releases all written. It was going to be, you know, Melbourne Man sells uh, MCG for $24.95. And my plan was to take all of the bits of wood and uh, cut them into little slithers and I stuck them onto certificate paper that I bought from Officeworks and I got the carpet and we framed up the carpet uh, and we were going to sell them for 700 bucks. So it was like, you know, the front end, uh, very cheap product to get them interested, the $24.95 and then upsell the high end product. And so I got everything all ready, flew up to Brisbane to do this workshop. While I was up there, I got a phone call from a friend uh, a couple of them actually because I told them what I was going to do just before I left and they said did you tell anyone about this idea about selling the MCG and I'm like no no what are you talking about and uh, they said you won't believe it but someone else the same age as you uh, had the same idea and they're doing it right now so um, I, as you can imagine I was almost like I mean I feel sick just thinking about it now like at the time I remembered how gutted I felt I was like this was my one in a lifetime opportunity and it's just been snatched out from underneath me uh, and uh, at the time like I mean there's nothing I could do I was up there I'd booked into this boot camp I think it cost me like six grand to go to this week-long event and the last thing I wanted to do was uh, come home so uh, once the boot camp ended I came back home uh, and I found out yep there was another guy 21, I think the media might have got a little bit confused because I thought, oh, I don't care. I'm still going to send these press releases out. I'm going to run with it as hard as I can. And uh, I still got picked up by the uh, Today Show and um, Nova Radio, Herald Sun, a whole bunch of different places picked it up. And I think because he was 21 as well uh, and I was 21, they just kind of got confused and they thought we were the same person or something like that. Um, so that was uh, obviously... The, one of the photos, it's quite funny, the guy that I've actually, who sold the MCG, I kept on bumping into him at different workshops and things like that, so we actually became quite good friends. His name's Pete Williams and we go rock climbing together and uh, I ended up actually just moving recently into his office and like, I mean, he's, he's a good dude. It's quite funny, my girlfriend uh, met him and she's like, oh, I never thought there was anyone else out there like you, but there's another one just like you. So he's a similar personality, but so how, how did I end up doing that? And I, and I got some good media there. So 
To get the, the TV, what I did is I wrote that press release that I just talked about. Like, I mean, that's, think about the hook there. You want to know how did a Melbourne man sell the MCG for $24.95, especially when Australia is such a, a, a sports mad nation uh, and, and selling the MCG, our most iconic sports stadium in Australia. So I wrote the press release, I sent it out, I did it good old fashioned old school. Um, I didn't do it via PR web or anything like that, which I'll show you a little bit later. Um, some of the more online press release services. I just sent it off to, like, I mean, you, you can go to some of the different newspapers and they'll have their editorial emails and you email it through to them. So I sent it through um, and that ended up getting me the spot on the Today Show. Uh, then I also started doing editorial ads. So in MX Magazine, uh, which is a little trashy magazine that they give out on the trains, um, I ran these little ads, but they, by editorial, they, they didn't look like an ad. I made it look like an article. So it looked like, you know, Melbourne Man sells the MCG for $24.95 and it was written and formatted just like the rest of the MX. So it looked like an, you know, an actual article in there. So I ran that and then the Herald Sun picked it up and then from the Herald Sun then it went on to Nova and the, um, the rest of the media happened from there. So the reason I tell you that story is so you can see, I mean, to get the media attention that you want to get picked up, typically speaking, I think it's going to be through an offline fashion. If you want to get reprinted in local news and things like that, um, you're better off distributing through some of those those channels and not necessarily using things like PR, web, uh, and some of the other online services. And it gives you a chance to connect with the reporters as well. Um, uh, so, so that that whole MCG thing um, w was a fantastic experience, and then I, I realised the power of this uh, this this media attention. Like, I mean, when I did the MCG thing, I remember we got quite a lot of sales that came off the boat of a lot of that media exposure. Then I ended up getting it on uh, what was it wish wish list? Uh, okay lastminute.com.au. It's like a website where they have these little offers and things like that where they offer, um, uh, you know, it's almost like a Groupon or deal of the day. You know, those types of websites that are popping up now. They did this little own a piece of the MCG promotion and it got sent out. And I remember the fax just went mental for 48 hours because this was before they were emailing out the receipts. Um, and the phone would ring, a fax would come through. Uh, with, with an order on it and then you'd wait a second or two the phone would ring again because they were only sending one through at a time and it went straight for like 24, 24, 48 hours of just order after order after order after order and that's what just made me think oh there's something in this media and all of that was free for me like I, I didn't do much work there uh, like I mean I ran that editorial ad uh, and then it opened the doors with last minute and then I mean there's just so many benefits that come from doing that so started to use that now that we're launching Melbourne SEO services and also in the trading business I did it as well so uh, one I'm going to give you is this uh, Harrow help a reporter out um, if you search Harrow or help a reporter out it's a website where uh, reporters will go and they will list, like I mean if they're writing an article they might want some info or some new, you know some help on writing an article on a certain topic. So you might be uh, writing, uh, they, they might be writing an article on you know what's going on in the construction industry and they'll go to Harrow and they'll post something on Harrow saying I'm looking for someone who's an expert in construction in Toowoomba uh, who can help me out with writing this report. Uh, and they'll list these things on Harrow and then you can contact them and say, hey, I saw this listing, I can help you out. And then they'll contact you and then you can get some, some exposure that way. So a good example of that is this uh, perfect domain name. We got that in Net Registry and I did that through Harrow. And then the real aim of the game, the real key, there's another one called Source Bottle. Harrow is worldwide, Source Bottle is uh, just Australia, but it's, it's that idea of reporters posting, hey, I need some help, and then you help them out. But then the real secret is to become a reporter's friend. So. I did this uh, in the stock market niche incredibly well where I, I, I got connected with someone who was uh, inside uh, the Fin Review and Smart Investor 
and he would just come to me. Uh, and like, I mean, I, that's when I got in Chart Point, I got in Smart Investor a couple of times because he asked me for one quote. And then next time I said, oh, you know, if you need any other help in future, just give us a call. And then he just started calling me again and again and again. So it's almost like you just have to weasel your way in there to get to the right person. And then once you've got the right person, do what you can to build up that relationship with them. And then that could open so many great doors for you. Become their friend. And uh, I mean, that ended up leading to, I had someone else, there's a couple of books there where someone uh, was, uh, he wrote two books and then he ended up uh, speaking to me and I've got like a whole chapter he did on me in his book. Uh, and that was the same thing, built up a friendship. So that's uh, off, uh, using offline media. Um, and now what I want to talk a little bit about is using uh, online press releases and uh, the way that you can get exposure to what it is that you're doing online. Now, using offline media is, the, like the, what I've just talked about there, is probably going to get you published in magazines and newspapers and that type of thing. What I'm going to talk about here, really the, the strength is building the backlinks back to your website and getting traffic to your website. So there are some different distribution services and the one that we use is PR Web. So prweb.com. And, and when we're doing a, a particular promotion, uh, you know, we did it for Old Spice, we did it for um, Google versus Yellow Pages, uh, we did it just recently for the client with that uh, print calculator. And it's a fantastic way for getting loads and loads of backlinks because you submit your article or your press release through to this service and then this service distributes it out to thousands and thousands upon thousands of other websites around the internet um, and, and you just write up your press release. It's exactly the same thing that I was talking about before. Try and find your hook and then you try and write your story uh, and, and I mean the Google versus yellow pages, I, I showed you the results that we were getting from that. It was fantastic. Now as far as the backlink benefits and this comes back to remember we were talking about SEO and I said it's all about building good quality backlinks from a variety of different sources. Press releases is one of the best ways of building uh, online press releases through PR web is one of the best ways of building backlinks. So here's this Google versus yellow pages survey. Now I put it in quotes so that way you could see how many results came up. Now, we po posted this, that's old, uh, the 7th of April 2010, so what's that, well over a year ago now, easy, um, and when we first did it, uh, it actually had, you can see in the top left hand corner, it says there's about 502 results. The reason I put it in quotes was to show um, specifically how many pages referenced those exact words, because that was the title of my press release. Uh, so I know my press release has been distributed that many times. Now, when I first did it on launch, that we had about, so over 10,000 views, uh, sorry, not 10,000 views, over 10,000 references. So it got distributed out over to 10,000 different websites, all of them, or most of them, linking back to my website all of those good quality links coming back to my site. Now over time, like I said, it's well over a year old now and Google, you know, they'll start to remove things from the index and, you know, it's the same press release got pushed out everywhere so they start to combine some together and go, this is not so important. The moral of the story is we're still, you know, well over a you know, year and a half ago or thereabouts now uh, and I've got 502 results still in the search engines now. So it's like I've got over 502 quality backlinks that are still there after all of this time. So it's a great way for building those good backlinks. And I've got down there, you can see the Google versus Yellow Pages is, is great for us. We've got almost 15,000 views. Um, we also used uh, the strategy when we did the Old Spice commercial. Like, I mean, our uh, it, when, when you use it correctly and Everything that I've taken, like I mean, we deliberately started talking about SEO and we talked all about on-page optimization for a reason. It, once you know those strategies, it applies in everything that you do online. So when I posted a video, I talked about selecting your right keyword, making sure it's in the right place, your title tag, your description, your tags, uh, and, and making sure that the keyword's in the right place. The same thing with the press releases. When you write a press release, figure out what your keyword is, put it in the title tag, put it in the description, put it throughout the content. It's exactly the same. On-page optimization is the same. And by doing that, 
you can actually rank very quickly and very easy uh, using PR web and then using the on-page optimization strategies I taught you earlier to rank number one on Google for Google News. So Google News is often where a lot of reporters go when they're looking for content. So if you came up with something, like, I mean, if there was a, a breaking news item on, again, I'll use, uh, I mean, I was talking to Amanda briefly uh, in the break. She's in the construction industry. So if, if we think about what's going on in the construction industry, maybe there's some, you know, big, big news, construction news. Uh, Amanda then writes a press release uh, talking about, you know, how, what, you know, tries to coattail what that, current story is and then kind of rides in the, the slipstream of it, then she does the on-page optimization that I talked about. She gets number one on Google for Google News for that particular phrase and then all of the other reporters out there who are thinking, uh, you know, I, I want to write an article about this construction topic that's going on right now, but I don't want to do the same old tired one. And then Amanda's got a, an article in there that happens to put a unique spin on it then they'll contact her and then she could potentially get media coverage that way. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so it, it's, uh, it's, it's a great strategy and using PR web and then that on-page optimization will get you number one on Google. It, it's really uh, ridiculous how easy that is. So how to write one, find that angle I talked about. The other thing that you want to do is it's not about you. Uh, don't sit and write a press release article that's all about you and how great you are. That you have your contact information down the bottom. What is a press release's purpose? A press release's purpose is uh, to pre-sell the media person that they want to talk to you because you're an expert on that particular area. Um, so. The, the, the selling of you kind of happens further down, like down in the resource box, down the bottom, the buyer, when they want to contact you. The whole top part needs to be about that story. It's not about you. If you want a tutorial on submitting something to PR Web, um, just check out the youtube.com, uh, go to the SEO method uh, channel, and there's a, a PR Web tutorial that we've got on there. Uh, just having a look here. Okay. Okay, story. So just come here and go PR web. And there you go, PR web review and tutorial. So I've got a tutorial of there of me submitting. I even did, I can't remember which press release it was for. Melbourne So this is something to do. Oh, that's the Old Spice one, and I can see there. So I actually talk it through how to do a submission on PR Web. So the action plan from here uh, is make sure that you start watching Harrow, uh, check out Source Bottle, keep an eye on what's going on in your market news, uh, test out doing online PR, and. If you need any more help, like I mean, we do have a service where we do uh, press releases and we help people get that, that right angle uh, and we can help out with that for sure. But for now, again, some of these things, particularly in the, the later part, and we're, we're into that final 100 metres now, we're, we're about to start the wrap up uh, and I want to talk about bringing it all together and knowing where it is that you start. You, you don't need to get to this just yet, like I mean, if you remember at the start of the day I said I'll cram it all in and it's in there and then when the time's right, when you get to this point you can let it all bubble out. But just start doing a little bit of uh, PR, try and just keep a pulse on what's going on in your community. It's good uh, positioning when it comes to making you a, uh, an expert. Mm -hmm.